Okay, this video completes our lessons about how to solve equations, and um, it's the third in the series, so I call it 4C. It focuses on what, I'm, what I call duplicate variables. I might show you what I mean by cases where you have duplicate variables. Here's an example. I've got n in two different terms. And there may be cases where you're going to have n in three, four, five different places. Of course, it could be a different letter than n. That's the example that I have here. These are different situations than cases where you have two different variables. And in that case, I call those multiple variables. And you might have a case where you'll have a problem with x and y or a and b. Right now, I'm just talking about situations where you've got the same letter appearing in more than one place. This video, um, because it wraps up everything we're going to talk about in terms of solving equations, is probably going to be longer than the ones we've had uh, up until now. So I apologize for that. I know I have to get it done in less than 15 minutes because that's the technical time limit on the software that I use. But uh, I may race through this a little more quickly than I might otherwise like to, and I apologize. Here are 10 problems for you to try. Hit the pause button. When you come back, I'm going to show you the answers to all 10. OK, I'm going to assume that you've done that. Here are those answers. Make sure that you have all of these answers completely correct. I'll explain what I mean by identity. Um, but make sure you have all of these completely correct if you want to feel as though you understand this well enough to move on. Even if you feel as though you understand it that well, I recommend you watch this video all the way through because toward the end, I get into some word problem applications of these skills that I want to make sure everybody knows how to do. So please watch this complete video no matter how well you understand the algebra. There are going to be four keys discussed in this video. Hit the pause button to read all four, but I'm going to move on and start applying the first of those. Okay, step four, remember I've done steps one through three in the previous videos. It talks about moving the matching variables together and combining them. Let's look at this first example on the left. I've got two cases of m, I've got to put those together. Negative eight and two together make negative six. I've got negative six of these things called m, and it's equal to 12. To get m by itself and figure out what m is, I've got to divide away that negative six. Then the negative sixes cancel on the left, and I'm just left with m. And on the right, I've got 12 divided by negative 6, which is negative 2, just like I told you it should be. On the right side, it's a more challenging question. You might ask, um, why can't I use the skill that I used back in the last video? Why can't I divide everything by 3 and just move this out of here so that I don't have to do any distribution? Unfortunately, you can't do that because in this case, you've got two different terms on the right. The three only applies to the, the furthest term, the last term. It has nothing to do with the b. So you can't divide that three away unless you divide everything by three, the b as well as the 83. I wouldn't recommend that you do that. Instead, I would recommend that you go ahead and distribute that three. It's going to end up being a lot clearer. So three times one is three. 3 times 5b is 15b. Now I've got two cases of b, b and 15b. Together they make 16b. 16b plus 3 is 83. Well, now I want to get b by itself. And there are two steps here. I've got to get rid of the 3, and I've got to get rid of the 16. Subtract off the 3, and I've got 80 equals 16b. The last step, remember I'm unwrapping in the opposite order of PEMDAS, last step is to divide both sides by 16. 80 divided by 16 turns out to be 5, just like I told you the answer should be. Okay, now moving on to the next key. Sometimes you're going to have the variable on two sides of the equation. And the textbook talks about this in its chapter 3.4. And it recommends the same thing that I would recommend to you. If x, or whatever the letter is, if it's on both sides of the equation, move them so they come together on the side that has the greater variable coefficient. I'll show you what I mean. Here's an example problem straight from the textbook. We've got y on both sides of the dividing line. 
The coefficients are negative 9 and positive 6. Positive 6 is the bigger number, the greater coefficient. Move the negative over to the side of the 6. That way you're going to end up with a positive, and it's a whole lot easier to work with positives than negatives. So that's exactly what the textbook tells you to do in this paragraph. Hit the pause button, try this yourself, and I'm going to show you how the textbook solves it. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've paused and tried this problem yourself. Let me show you the steps the textbook took. First of all, they rewrote the equation and just copied it down again. Like I said, they moved the 9y over to the other side by adding 9y to both sides. 6y and 9y together make 15y. These negative and positive 9y's canceled, and I just have 80. If 80 is equal to 15y, all I have left to do is divide both sides by 15, and 80 divided by 15 simplifies down to 16 over 3. And that's the answer you should have gotten for this question. You might have done it with a calculator and you might have said it was 5.333, that's fine. Now, next and last set of keys. Sometimes when you have variables in two places, you're going to end up putting them together and find that they cancel each other out. When that happens, you're either going to get no solution or you're going to get something called an identity. And I'm going to show you what I mean uh, for both of those. But first, let's define the terms. An identity is an equation that's true for all values. Eh, maybe better if I show you the example. And, well, the, actually the textbook doesn't really explain what they mean by no solution, do they? I think the examples will help. Let's try doing this one. Go ahead and hit the pause button. Work this one out, see what answer you get, and then let me show you what the textbook Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. What they did first, well first they just copied the question down again. But the first thing that they did is they're going to distribute that 3. And they're going to get 3x plus 6 on the left is equal to 3x plus 6 on the right. Well notice the two sides are exactly the same. You can say right now that's got to be an identity. But I'll show you why. Put the 3's together, put the 6, I'm sorry, the 3x's together and put the 6's together. When you do that, when you move the three x's together, you're going to get three x minus three x, or in other words, zero plus six is equal to six. Or in other words, six is equal to six. That's always true. Six is always the same thing as six. As the textbook says, always true. When that happens, you have what's called an identity. In the case of an identity, you can put any number you want in for x, and the answer will prove to be true. I could put my favorite number in, or you could put your favorite number in for x and it's going to turn out to be true, um, no matter what. So let's go back and look at the case at the very beginning of this video where we got an identity. And that was this case down here, question 9. You should have found that the left side and the right side ended up saying the same thing. They ended up saying identical things. So I can put anything I want in for x, and I'm going to get um, a true statement. But sometimes you get no solution. Hit the pause button and try to work out B, see what you get, and then I'll show you what the textbook got. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've done that. Once again, all they did at the beginning was copy the question down. Now, what they do is they put the x's together, just like I told you to do, minus x from here. So x minus x is 0. So on the left, all I have left is 2. On the right, all I've left is 4. They're saying that 2 is equal to 4, but that's nonsense. 2 is never the same thing as 4. And sometimes you're going to get no solution when you have x's or variables canceling out. If the left side is set equal to something that doesn't match, then it doesn't matter what value I put in for x. It's not going to be true. And look at the original question that we were asked. Something plus 2 is the same thing as that something plus 4. That can't be true. Pick any number you want. Let's say 18. 18 plus 2 is not going to be the same thing as 18 plus 4. 0 plus 2 is not the same as 0 plus 4. I don't care what number you pick for x. It will not be true. And if we go back to the original batch of questions that I gave you, 
this one right here has no solution because negative 6x plus 6x, these sides cancel, and I end up with 0 is equal to 7, which is never true. So that's why we say there's no solution. It doesn't matter what I put in for x, it's not going to be true. Okay, now as promised, here are some word problem um, cases for implementing the skills that we've learned so far. Hit the pause button, try this yourself, and then I'll show you how to work this problem out. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've done that, and I'm hoping that you've been able to, to um, arrive at an answer for the question, which is going to turn out, by the way, to be one and a half, but let me show you why. On the left, I've got eight things called x. On the right, I've got two things called x plus three things called three. The important thing to realize is that they are in balance, which means they are equal to each other. So I can turn this statement in red into an algebraic equation. 8x is equal to 2x plus 3 times 3. Okay, so now what I want to do is get the x's together on one side, just like I taught you. I'm going to have 6x is equal to 3 times 3, or 9. Now I've got to divide that 6 away, and I'm left with x is equal to 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. I hope that's the answer you got. Hit the pause button if you need to to study it. We've got one more word problem to try, and that's this one. This is not a case, I'll just tell you now, it's not a case where the variable's on both sides. Um, this may be easier, may be harder, but it's certainly different. Go ahead, hit the pause button, try to set it up as an equation. So as it says, write an equation and solve the equation. Figure out what the number of hours of labor are. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. Here are both the equation and the answer. 34 times, well they picked x, I might have picked h. 34 times the number of hours plus the starting amount, the cost of the parts, 339, is going to equal the total amount, 458. To solve for x, or I called it h, I've got to move the 339 over first, and then I divide everything by 34. When you do that, you should end up with three and a half. And so the answer is three and a half hours. That's it for this video. Um, hopefully at this point, you're ready to take the quiz for 4C.